Okay, in this part of the video now, we're going to start focusing on starting to draft the walls. Okay, drafting like the, the kitchen sinks, where all this information is going to go. Okay, we're going to, in the, the finishings part of this tutorial, I will cover how we're going to add like the furniture I'll, and those type of things. But for now, we're going to focus on drafting this information accurately. Okay, good. Now, there is a tool that is hidden. When you want to draft, so if we want to draw a, a double wall, it's called the multi-line tool, okay? So in order to make this work, you'll need to go to view and you'll need to go and set up a tool palette. Okay, by default, if you don't have, if, if you haven't set up your tool palettes yet, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new palette. So you're going to make a new palette. I'm going to call this test. For now, but you can call it my tools, for example. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on this again and you're going to say customize palettes. Now in the customize palette section, if we go right to the top, make sure all of these are closed. Okay, we're going to go and make a new palette group. Okay, you need to make a palette group in order to put your palette on the right one. So in the blank area, you're going to make, so anywhere in the blank you're going to say new group now it'll add a new group at the, the bottom i've made one already so i'm going to delete this group delete this group okay and here i've got a test one but by default you can see i've made one already okay called tools my tool so i'm going to delete this for now and delete okay good now once you've made a palette you're going to drag and drop it to the correct section okay and your tools so you're going to press close now you're going to right click on this palette and you're going to activate just your tools. Now you're going to see you're going to have a series of palettes. Tools and draw, that's totally up to you. Okay, I've added this draw one so I can remove this. I can delete this palette from here. Okay, but I'm going to delete this test palette. So delete this for now. Yes, press OK. I'll leave draw and tools together. Okay, now with your draw and tools palette, you can simply, once you've made a group, you can simply go and add a new palette over here. But what you need to do is you need to go and find these tools over here. So I'm going to remove this as well. So this is uh, delete that. Yes, and I'm going to delete that. Delete. Okay, good. So what you need to do is you need to go and add these, these commands to your tool palette. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new palette. I'll delete it again. I'm going to call it test. Okay, so I'm going to say new palette. I'm going to call this test. So what you need to do now is in order to use these multi-line tools, you'll need to go to this section at the top here, click on this drop down, and you need to go to more commands. Okay. Now you're going to go and scroll down until you get to M. So you click on the on these tools and go to M. You need to find the multi-line. Okay. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that the symbols Multi-line, multi-line, here we go. Multi-line edit. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to drag and drop each one of these. So multi-line, multi-line edit, and multi-line style. Okay, you need to drag all these into a palette. Okay, you can add them to your tools palette like I've done. So I'm going to remove this now that I've done that to show you how to do it. So I'm going to delete palette. Yes. Okay, good. Now my tools section. Here I've got my series of palettes. What you can also do is you can divide these up. So you can divide the palette up. You can add a text and you can add a separator, just like I've done here. And here I'm just going to go and edit, rename this. I'm going to call this um, okay, tools. So these are the tools that I want to use. Now, what a multi-line is. A multi-line will, uh, will allow you to draw a multiple line object. So if I go to multi so not multi-line edit. If I go to multi-line style, let's click on this multi-line style. Okay, it opens up this dialog box, and there'll be some here already. Okay, basically, what I went to did was I created a seventy-six um, mill wall, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this a uh, uh, a wall one one five wall. Okay, just give it the name or the width of the wall. Continue. What this allows you to do, this allows you to create a wall that can have closed ends with it. So we'll leave that as closed. Everything is, you leave everything exactly the same by layer. Now I'm going to change. So if we had a 110 wall, it'll be 105 
So it'll, it'll be 55 and then minus 55. So 55 and minus 55, okay? This is how you're going to make a 110 wall. And I'm going to press OK. Now I've got a 115 wall. Sorry, let's just rename that. Make it a 1. Unfortunately, once you've made 1 and you've used it, you cannot go and change things later. Okay, because that is just one of the drawbacks of using this tool. Okay, press OK. Good. Now, I'm going to go and change. I'm going to go to Home. And I'm going to go and simply start... Select my timber, because these are my timber walls. Just remember if it was timber masonry or a masonry wall, wall masonry, for example. So I could show you very quickly how I could have drawn these walls. Okay. But for this exercise, I'm going to start drawing my, tim my timber walls. Okay. So I'm going to have a timber wall here. And here I'm going to have a timber wall on this construction line. So I'm going to have a timber wall down here. So you can see I'm going to have a timber wall. I'm going to have a timber wall around here until it hits that section. Okay, we draw the stuff and then we're going to, once we've drawn the wall, we'll go and delete the sections that we don't need anymore. But you can see, I'm going to have a timber wall that runs along. So from here, it goes to there and then runs along here, runs all the way down here and back to here. Okay, remember here's a construction line. Then we'll start cutting holes in the, for the doors, etc. Okay, good. Now that we've got that, that going. So here I'll take this right across. We just want to establish where our walls will go and then we'll start cutting it up and then start putting the correct information in. Here I've got a couple walls. This one I can change. I can move it to fit. Okay. All right. So let's just start. I'm going to use my timber walls. Now I'm going to go to multi-line. I'm going to start drawing. Now it's going to ask you for a style. Now if you click the question mark, it's going to give you a list of all the styles that you can use. So you simply type in 76. Okay, good. Now it's asking you for a justification. So top, top. So here the justification sit for top, but if you set it to zero, it will draw in the middle and then bottom at the bottom. So if I click top and I start drawing now, if I start drawing my wall. You'll notice now it creates a multi line that you can use. Let's draw it again. Spacebar, repeat command. Now I can draw one here and I'm going to draw one somewhere over here because I can move this wall later on okay now if I press spacebar again I change justification I change this to zero if I start drawing now you'll notice it'll draw around the center line of this wall which is I don't want that I don't want that to happen so I'm going to press spacebar again so click multi-line justification I'm going to change it back to top now I can simply start drawing so now I'm going to have a wall that will run, yeah, so called the top. So I'm going to have a wall that's going to run from here all the way down to here, all the way back to here, all the way back to here, nearest. It's going to come back at some point. I'll change this later on and stop in line with that. I'm going to have another wall that's going to run from there. Actually, I lie. It's going to run from here. Now, I might have to work from the other side. So the wall's going to run from here, go from here, go from here, go to there. Okay. Now, we are going to split this up later on and change how this looks. Okay. But for now, you can see it's given me enough information to start putting this in. Remember, if you use the stretch command, you can stretch this. Okay. You can go and get these connected. Now, the last tool we're going to look at is the multi-line style tool. Sorry, edit tool. What this allows you to do very quickly is to join walls. So say open T, I want to open this with that. You'll notice that it will open this T here. However, if this does change, so if you use a stretch command, you will have to go and close this join up again. and then. But go and experiment with those tools. Okay. Now, what the beauty is, once I've got this wall in place and I explode, now these become individual bits of line work okay so now you can see that this is all individual bits of line work and it's just given me the outline of my wall now i can start using my normal tools where i can start trimming these objects etc etc okay remember i trimmed the construction line so maybe i don't want to do that so at some point go and lock these construction lines lock them in the background so you don't accident so you don't accidentally delete them okay at any point you can unlock that layer so now it means if I trim that wall, 
trim it won't delete that so if i trim you'll notice that the construction line stays in place okay because yes here i've got a wall that continues through but i'm gonna to have to start adding some doors etc 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 okay so and here's an opening here because you can see this stopped on that line there okay so we had another wall over here but if i go to multi-line so here i can start adding this information in so technically i had another wall that ran down here for example okay yes i know there's going to be a window sill so we can see that there's going to be a window here okay so this wall maybe i wanted to add so here i might have to draw a new wall so multi-line okay good this will stop and then join onto here okay as per this example all right good now as i said this gives us enough information but what we need to do now is we'll need to start exploding this so that we can start drafting our walls incorrectly. So these are all going to become multi lines in essence or poly lines. So let's just start doing this exercise roughly. Okay, so here, for example, I know that this would trim, this wall would actually stop over here. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to select this information and my walls, this information and this information, and I'm going to use the isolate command. Remember, if you're using the isolate command in settings, what I tend to do is I make sure the off function is set and off again. It just means that you're going to get the same effect. If you want to return your layers, you simply use this return option. If that does not work, you can simply go to all your layers, right click on here and say visible, switch everything on and thaw everything if, if, you, if things are not coming back. Okay, great. So I'm going to isolate just the wall layer for the time being. I'm going to select all this information and I'm going to explode everything. Good. The next thing I'm going to do is you can make these polylines so you can get rid of those little ends sometimes those ends we can i'll leave those ends for the time being but now we need to start fixing this information up so it looks correct okay so this will need to trim so and this is trim now so let's use a trim command trim here i'm going to say cutting edge i'm going to say from there and there spacebar now i can trim this information away because technically that's not going to happen there likewise trim here I might have to trim these objects, a trim, but a cutting edge. So this one, that one, and that one. Okay, now what happened there was there was no cutting edge. But what we can do, there's another command. If we go to modify and we go to break, we can break these lines out. Now we can use the fillet command. Fillet, make sure the radius is set to zero. Now we can start filleting this line work. Fill it, fill it, that with that. But she has a window here, so technically that's not going to work like that. So that and that line can fill it. Okay, but we can extend that line with back now. But for is for now, I'm just trying to work out and trying to establish this information based on my image. If we go back to our example, so basically there's going to be a window here, so technically the wall would have stopped there. But as we start adding this information, so this will come back to this point. I'm going to leave that line work there for the time being because we're going to add a plaster layer, for example. Okay, good. Get rid of that. So this line, I can use the extension tool now. So trim, extend. So I'm going to extend this. So I'm going to extend that line to there. And that, no, that will leave like that. So I'm going to say trim. And I'm going to select these bits of line work over here. Get rid of this little endpoint. So technically, this is how it's going to end over here. Okay. We can split this line, but for now, the window is going to go in here and I'll explain how that's going to work. Here, I've just lost this bit of line work, but that's fine because now I can just simply draw this back. Okay, fill it command, fill it this with that, use the F, so fill it command, trim those back. Here, we've got a door opening, so let's just go and see how big that door opening is. Okay, door opening. Okay, so here I've got a door. And this is where I'll start using my door blocks. Okay, it's a 600 wide door. Okay, it's a 610 wide leaf door. Now, if I bring back, if I bring back everything, if I go and start using my door, there's some families that I've given you. So if you go and start, start a new drawing and open up your template file, you open up the template I gave you. So if you go and say form C template, what I'm gonna copy from this is I'm gonna copy my doors and windows maybe copy some of this information but I'm just going to control C I'm going to copy this door and put this into my my project over here okay this will give you some options I'm going to change it to a 90 degree door now 
The door opening, the door size, the door width does not include the leaves. So if I change this to a 610 door, 610 door, if I go and measure now, if I use the dimension tool from there, the eye to there, that's 610. Remember, it excludes, we always dimension the leaf. Now I can move this, this door, move this door, so use the move command, select the door and put the door in the right location. Okay. Now, there's one more item that we have to start adding to this and that's our plaster line. Okay. In order to make this door fit correctly, so let's just move this, let's just see which, which way the door swung, it swung out. So here, move your door. While you're moving the door, you can say B for base point, you can change the base point, so you can put it over here. Okay, but spacebar, spacebar, remember spacebar, spacebar, you can cycle through some different commands while you've got an object, especially a block by its base point. So I want to move this door like that. I'm going to use this flip tool, and now I'm going to move this door into the right location. Now, one thing to consider, this door is going to need some plaster. There's going to be some plaster line first to complete this door. So what's neat is if I go to multi-line tool, and I go to ST, I click on style and I press question mark. I've got a 15 mil plaster line. So it's a bit of plaster. Okay. And I'm going to show you how I set that line up. So if I go and say, yep, I'm going to use my 15 mil plaster, 15 mil plaster. Okay. Now if I start drawing spacebar, justification, make it zero now. So now you see I've got a 15 mil plaster line that I can use. So let's just go and say multi-line style and just go to modify. And this is how I've made this. I've made it in one direction, only a positive, so it always works from zero. Okay, so that's, just remember, so if I go to modify, you see it's only in one direction because it's only one bit of line work and this multi-line style is going to work from zero. So if I change this to plaster, P for plaster, Okay, so if I've got a plaster line now, and I've got a multi-line style, and I make sure that my plaster line 50 mils selected, and I go justification, I change this to zero. Then if I start drawing now, remember draw in the opposite direction. So now I can start drawing in my plaster line. So my plaster line, in essence, depending how this will work, will go from here to there to there. Spacebar, come back in this direction, from here to there to there. Okay, good. But remember, this line you're going to have to explode as well and make it work correctly. So, how wide is this wall in essence, including the plaster line? So, press R for reference. I've used the dimension tool, 106, or if you use a measure tool, R. It's the same tool that we're using, P for perpendicular. The distance is 106. So, in essence, this door frame, if I press Control 1, you'll notice that the the wall thickness, this will be 106. Good. Now, if I move this door into the correct location, move this door from there to there. Now this door is in the right location. Okay. Based on this information that I've got here. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can now start trimming away the information I don't need. So in essence, I just need a bit of line work over here and over here. I'm going to select these multi lines and explode them. Explode them. Okay, good. Now there's another tool that I like to use here is the break tool. I'm going to select the object and then I'm going to click F for first. F for first. So that'll be my first point. This will be my second point. Good. Break again. Break this line. Okay, this line we don't have to. We can simply just move this back to this point over here because technically the plaster finishes here. Likewise with the brickwork, this will come straight to that point over here. And again, this one will break again. So here I'm going to use the break line tool, break line. Good. There. And now I can simply use the fillet command from there to there. Okay, now we've closed this wall off. It's important. And what I like to do sometimes is I just try and make, so make this my current layer, make current. I like to close where these lines are closed off. Okay, but now that I've got my door in, I'm going to go and just neaten this up because that's how the same process that I've adopted here, I will apply to all the rest of these. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and I'll show you the end result.
Okay, so what I've done now is I've got an indicated where all the doors were. So sometimes I just drafted this information on. So using your door layer, I drafted more or less where these doors were going to go. Likewise with this door. So I drafted this door and how that would work. Okay, so purely just using a, a bunch of line work, I managed to draft this um, draft this door and indicate it correctly. Okay, so you'll just need to draft this information in. Okay, but these are very easy to create. So I'll explain how you can divide this, especially this door. I can run you through. I can run through how that was done. But now you can see that I've established where all my doors are going to go. Yes, this is going to be a window over here, and there's a window running over here. And there's some different detail happening over here. Okay, so let me switch off my construction lines for the time being. So let's freeze these layers. Okay, here there's going to be a series of beams. So if you go and look at my example, so I've just stopped that short. These two beams that come in the location. Now what we do is because technically I'm going to use my stud work to represent this correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all of this information. I'm going to match this layer. So I'm going to go and select. So I'm going to go and grab all of this information. So in essence, if I isolate everything on this timber layer, I'm going to make all of that my plaster layer because technically that's plasterboard. I'm going to represent my um, I'm going to represent my stud work using my timber section layer. So I'm going to change all of that to plaster very quickly. Okay, so let's just change this to plaster. Find your plaster layer. Uh, P for plaster. Where is it? There, there we go. Okay, good. That's fine, and reinstate everything again. So now everything's on my plaster layer. Now the next step that I need to do is I need to go and use my timber stud work. Now depending on how you going to use this information, okay, so the stud work works in a very specific way. So if I grab this and I put this piece of block in this area, I can use my mirror tools. Okay, so I can select this area, spacebar, 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 there's my mirror, mirror command, press F8. Now I've mirrored this block. Now, because this is an intelligent block, I can now change the size. And this is the correct size that I'm going to use for the stud. Okay. To make these objects, there is another tutorial that I'll share with you. And I'll, I'll tag that information. I'll tag that reference. Okay, if you go to timber stud, this is how these are made. And this is how they work. You add parameters. Okay. And you're using authorizing, but I will link... A video where you can go and access this information okay because I've covered that in my section video okay good now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna copy this stud work and start putting it in the right locations okay copy this put this in this location okay so in essence I just want to go around and I want to start adding this information in the right location so if I go to my example so here I've got a square one. So let's just start indicating and putting these in the right location. Okay, I'm going to do this one over here and show you how you're going to divide this as well. And just cover that tool again. So again, make sure this is on your timber section layer. So make sure that your timber section layer is active. Okay, you can go to insert blocks. If you've made a block, you can go and find your recent blocks very quickly that you've used. Okay, this will open if you click on recent. So I'm going to clear and find this timber block that I've been using. Okay, so let's just close this again and go and say insert. So it will be on this list over here. So you're going to go and find timber stud. Good. Now you can simply and make sure that this layer is active. Okay, so let's just start over here. Let's put this in. Here I'm going to click again. Tab, tab, rotate it down. And then move it. Shift right click perpendicular. Okay, so the stud will start from there. Copy this from here. Right click perpendicular. Okay, so now there's going to be a series of stud work in here. Okay, you can go and change, you can go and get the construction layer. So you can go and find your construction layer temporarily. Okay, this layer is off and thawed, so switch it back on. Make this your current layer, draw a line. Draw a line. Good. Now there's a command that we're going to use, and it's called divide. So here you can divide or you can measure along an object. If I go and say divide and I select this object, I'm going to say I want to divide this by three times. You'll notice it adds these nodes. Okay, it'll add nodes. Now if you go to utilities, point style, you can go and change the way these nodes look. 
okay and you can change the unit so relative I usually use an absolute unit but you can say relative to screen so 50% of the screen so the more you zoom in and you use regen that will resize okay so that's totally up to you but I prefer to use absolute units and I change it to 50 good because then that way is in the right location now all that you do is you go and grab your block and you copy this so from there to there to there okay there is another way to do this remember now if i use my isolate command i can go and delete this information that i don't need again and then reset and then carry on okay so that's how i've done that okay i'm going to pause this and then carry on adding all of the stud work quickly okay now you would have noticed that i've managed to put in all my stud work in the right location i'm going to switch off my construction layer at this point so i'm just going to freeze my construction layer And let's just change mine to timber section again so it doesn't matter what layer we select and so just go to timber section go to timber doesn't matter and now we can just switch off this information okay good now you can see my drawing is starting to come on nicely the last thing i need to do is just go and start adding my windows adding my window information in. now the window information this is a little tricky okay so and I just need to go and draw this masonry wall over here. Okay, so I'm going to go and add that in quickly. Okay, just remember, this is, again, this is very easy to do. So here you're going to go and change polyline, masonry. Make sure that you can use a polyline for this. And I can simply start drawing from there to there, perpendicular, shift perpendicular. Likewise, in this direction, from here to here, and shift perpendicular. All I'm going to do now is use the offset command, offset 110110. Now I'm just going to draw, you can use the isolate command quickly and draw some line work. Okay, draw a polyline again from there to there, polyline from there to there, polyline just close, make this a close set of objects. All we need to do now is go to draw. Polyline edit, so go to modify, my apologies, polyline edit, go M for multiple, select these objects very quickly, say yes, you want to join them, spacebar, and then just say close. And close. Now these should be a series of closed polylines. Let me just reset everything again. Okay, good. So I've got my masonry wall. Okay, now the windows. Okay, so typically how I made my windows work, my windows, if I go to my windows layer, Okay, now this is something that you just need to bear in mind because there's some information that we'll need to go and override. So in Windows, I'll we'll go to Layer Properties. Okay, Windows by default at 0.15. Okay, but now sometimes depending on the scale, this is hard to read. So I'm going to go and create a rectangle. So create a rectangle. Now I'm going to use my Tab key. Make sure Dynamic Inputs is on your dynamic, so that you can add these dimensions on the fly. Okay. If this, if this is not visible, remember, click on this customization icon, and then you can go and add dynamic inputs. Okay. Now, with this layer selected, make sure everything's by layer, rectangle. I'm going to use a 30, comma, sorry, my apologies, 30, tab, 60. So my window frame, if I move this, from there to there and then move this back so move this from there to there should perpendicular okay so that's my first bit of glass okay now yes there's going to be a million over here so let's just see how that worked and you can see there was a square piece of glass million over here okay but that's fine my window in place i'm going to copy this information copy this put this over here use my mirror command mirror from here to switch off, switch on the orthographic snap for now. And you'll see that this will snap at 45 degrees and make sure that you've got powder tracking on. So on snap, on snap tracking must be on. Make sure this is on and make sure that your powder tracking is set to 45 degrees in order to do this. So click here, go mirror. Good, copy this, copy this and put this against there just like that okay so that's why it's slotted in over there i provided that slot 
Now, this is a plaster lab that sits beneath. That's fine. You can leave that in because we can simply just draw over this information. Now, I'm going to copy this one more time. Copy this. And that's it there. Now, what's interesting, you can use the stretch command or you can use this icon over here and you can drag the square out. Okay, so now you can drag it out and it should snap. You can snap this rectangle to match. Alternatively, what you could have done is you could have used the stretch command, stretch command, and you could have simply stretched this. Okay, so stretch from there to there. Okay, so there's that option. Now, with my Windows layer, I'm going to draw the extent of my window there. You can make one of these and use it again and again, and that's what I'm going to show you now. Go from there to there, from there to there. I'm going to isolate my window layer quickly. Isolate this layer very quickly. Now I'm going to use the offset command, so 15. So my glass, depending on what side, usually this gets installed from the one side. Okay, so if you go to my example, sorry, my example, let's zoom out, you'll see that the glass works from the inside and out. So the external side of the glass is always, okay, so the external side of the building, so the external side of the building, so from here. So you're going to go offset 15, and 15 again, 15 and 15. I know that we don't put the actual thickness of the glass because this is more of a symbolic, um, especially at the scale, it's more symbolic than the actual dimension. So as long as this looks like a window. Okay, now you can see I've got my window in place. Okay, good. Now what I do is I select the glass information and I'm now going to override this glass. So here you can go and say by layer, you can change this to gray. So if you click here again, you go to more colors, make sure it's gray. Okay. But untick this must be this must set this must be by layer. You can also use this command. So let's do this command, control one, and I'm going to override the line weight to 0 0.13. Okay. This is personal preference. Find something that works for you. Okay, the whole time when you start setting up your sheet correctly, you can start checking this information. But this is just a general rule that I've adopted. Okay, and here you can see I can change my line weight very, very quickly to 1.3. Okay, it just means when you read this on line weights. So this quickly, very quickly on your sheet, okay, not yet. We'll go and set this up on your sheet to make this look correctly. So I'm going to reset everything. Now I'm going to go to my sheet. I'm going to copy, copy this viewport. So that you can keep the settings. Okay. Now, if I double click in the viewport, I unlock this viewport and I right click and I use the pan command. I'm just going to quickly pan in this plan and kind of get it set up and make sure my viewport is locked and the scale is correct. Now, if you start zooming in, you must just make sure that the line weights start reading correctly. And you can see this is starting to work quite well. Okay. The next thing I've got to do is just add my window information to this side over here, okay? So typically, how they fix this, you can see where these things start, flush with the, the plasterboard, they'll put the plasterboard in, they'll put the window in, give it a bit of an offset, and then put the plasterboard around, okay? Now, I can simply copy this window information. Now, what happens sometimes, there is a layer beneath here that I don't wanna copy by accident, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate my window layer, Isolate, copy this, bring back my layers, just so I'm getting all the wrapped information. Now I can simply grab this information, move this, and I'm going to put this window in over here. So I'm going to stretch it to the right side. So what I'm going to do now is just make sure that I mirror this. Mirror. Now I'm going to mirror along there, but yes, I'm going to delete the source, and I'm going to move this. To the correct location. So I'm going to move this from here to flush. So it's going to sit just like that. Okay, because my window is going to sit on that line exactly like that. Great. Here, this line just needs to be trimmed back. So trim that back to there. So it reads correctly. Good. Now, you're going to have another line. So this is my internal plaster line. So this is where it's, I'm just using a quick line where this is going to end. I'm going to use the stretch command. Stretch this, shift perpendicular, good, okay, now what you can do is you can use the mirror command at a 45 degree, so switch F8 off, 
switch this putter tracking on. There we go. Now I can mirror this line, this line, this line, and this line along the same point. No. Now I can simply copy, copy this from there. To there, now I can simply use the stretch command and pull this back to the same. Okay, good. I can delete that layer. Now my windows are done. So I've literally shown how my windows are going to work. Yes, this line's always going to be there, but technically the plaster line is going to end here, and you're going to have a window here. Just copy this one more time. Now you've got your window in the right location. Good. Okay, so you can see I've added most of my information I need to add now. Go and add your kitchen counters in. Go and add that, go and add that information in so that looks correct. Okay, so when I'll be back, I'm going to show you the completed um, set of line work. I'm going to include my steps, etc., etc. And for your toilets, just remember you can use, if you don't have this option, remember you can use, so I'm going to go to open I'm going to open up my drawing block file so if I go to form C if I open this up remember please go and download this go and download the symbols and copy the symbols that you need okay so there will be a link on how to make these but go and get you'll see that these are all exploded I will try and make these blocks if possible okay and there'll be a link on how to do that okay so when we come back I would have drawn everything in this drawing Okay, so now once we're back, I've noticed I've added some symbols, and again, I've overridden this for my door openings. Okay, I've brought in these plant symbols, I've added them on a planting layer. All this information I went and got off this, this block file that I've given you. Okay, so by using this block file, you can put together a very comprehensive set of drawings so like the furniture, but that's totally up to you. Go and find the information that you think will work with your drawing. Okay, so here you can see. Ultimately, and I've drawn the beams above. Okay, so technically that should be on the next example. So I've just taken this a step further, but we'll cover that. So in the finishing part of the tutorial. So the next tutorial, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover putting the insulation in, drawing the lines of the beams, for example. Okay, so if you look at my example drawing, there's going to be a series of beams that sit above here of this section. So if you go and see the section AA that I created through here, you'll see where those beams are located. But in essence, you can see I've managed to pull in these blocks and they're all blocks. The shower are drafted using my drafting tools. Okay, like, okay, so like the kitchen, this is all information that I've extracted from. And please use the correct layers. If you're using this information, you can use this layer that they've given you, Sani, but you can also use a, a, a different layer as well. Okay. But for now, at this stage, you should have a drawing that looks very similar to this.